Hello, I'm Jamila Musaiva, an international social etiquette consultant and the author of two books, Etiquette, The Least You Need to Know and Afternoon Tea Etiquette. For all those of you that have been inquiring about my book, my books are only available in print in Libraf bookstores, I'll link them down below in the description box, in Azerbaijan. If you want to order one, you can email them. To my old subscribers, welcome back to my channel and to all the new viewers, welcome to my channel so please don't forget to subscribe because I offer a lot of entertaining, I hope, and educational videos that I hope will improve your life on a daily basis. This video is dedicated to all those who don't love reading books or don't know how to start loving reading books or to all those who have lost their motivation to read more books. So this video I hope will help everyone to start loving reading and to do it on a daily basis. Tip number one is read about the subject that you already like. For those of you who don't like reading or don't know how to start liking to read a book, I want to recommend that you start reading about something that you naturally like about. Say you are into astrology or you are into gardening, you can find books about this particular subjects and then you can start reading about them because you already like the subject. This will get you into the process of reading and hopefully eventually take you to the second stage where you're already so accustomed to reading that you start reading books on various different subjects. This applies not only for those that don't know how to start loving to read a book but also for those who have lost the motivation. Maybe they were reading consistently for a year and they just now can't get their hands on a book. Then again, this is a good technique to use. Go back to reading things that you love about. For example, me, I like reading about a lot of self-help books. So for me to start wanting to read more, I start with a self-help book and then I move on to different genres. Tip number two is always, always, always carry a book with you. Personally, I enjoy reading hard copy books. I don't like reading electronic version books, but there are some uh, circumstances where you don't have access, let's say, to a hard copy. Then, of course, make sure that you have something on your hands, either on your phone or maybe your iPad, where you have downloaded books and they're available for you at any time. I personally love to carry hard copy prints with me everywhere that I go, even on the times when I know I will not be able to read a book. Say I'm going out to a park with my kids or I'm going for a meeting, I know I won't have time to read a book, but I will still make sure that I have at least one copy, if not two, in my handbag. You know there is the saying, out of sight, out of mind. I don't think it only applies to people that you like, but I think it all applies to everything in life. That includes having your books at a site, so making sure that they are available, accessible and reachable at the point where you kind of want to give it a shot and try to read a page or maybe two. So right now the reason this back is standing here is because I wanted to show you that currently in my back I have two different books. Um, so I have this book called Silk and I have this book called Happy Money. I'm gonna talk about them a little bit later but what I try to say is when I have the books and my hand back I'm sure that wherever I go even if I have a five minute break I can always reach out and make sure that I leave at least a page. Tip number three is do not put deadlines on your leisure readings. It might be a different case for your academic readings where it might be in school or university, you're assigned to finish a book by a certain time and then you have to do it, you have to stay within the deadline. But for books that you're reading for your own improvement, for your self-development, do not put deadlines on yourself. Say a friend of yours is finishing a book within two days, good for them, that's their pace of reading a book. It might be a different case for you, you might finish a book in a month time and that's okay as well, as long as you continue reading and finish a book. For me personally, I think putting these mental deadlines in your head puts so much stress on you that it makes you associate reading with a stressful time or a task that you need to accomplish, therefore making you think of reading as something negative. And I don't want that to happen. I want you to start loving reading. In that case, you need to take away those deadlines, enjoy the process and do it at your own pace. I've actually seen a case where a person was joining a reading marathon and you know they've been consistently reading for that marathon for a month or two or three and then they got so tired of this marathon that they gave up reading for an entire year. For me personally, I think it's not a good goal to have, it's not a good habit to develop. I think it's better to continuously read rather than do it intensively for three months and then give it up for a year. 
I personally might take a day to finish a book if I'm really into it, but sometimes it might take me two or three months to finish one little book. And that depends a lot on my time, on my mood, on my priorities for that month, on what are some things that I need to get done for that month. So I'm very patient with myself in that sense. I give myself time and you know make it sure that I actually enjoy the reading process altogether. I think that reading is just another grooming habit, like brushing your teeth twice a day or washing your hair every day or every other day. Reading as well is a hygiene habit, but it's for your mind and for your soul. It's nourishing it, it is nurturing it, it is taking care of your brain. So just make sure that you don't put any deadlines on reading and then you'll enjoy the process and make it a lifestyle habit. Tip number four is letting go of the book that you don't enjoy reading and understanding that it's okay not to finish a book that you have started to read. I used to think that it's so important to, if you started a book, you had to finish it. That it's so important to make sure that you read from A to Z and then you move on to something else. And then I learned this tip and then I thought to myself, how amazing it is that this little tip has tremendously changed my attitude towards reading altogether. Like everything in life, it's so important to understand when it's time to let go of something. And I think it applies to reading a book as well. Even if everyone else is gushing about it, everyone's talking about it, it's an international bestseller. If it did not catch your attention, if it's not speaking to your heart, if you're not enjoying the reading, why force it? Why make it a must to finish the book? You can start reading it, you can give it a chance, you know, close it, maybe come back in a month's time. And it's, if it's still not going, then let it go. It's not for you. Because again, forcing yourself to read something that you're not interested in and forcing yourself to finish it will make you hate reading altogether. And it's something we want to prevent. Tip number five is read books from different genres simultaneously. We have this stigma, or I used to have the stigma that if I started a book, one book, I had to finish it and then start a new one. It never occurred to me that it's possible to read two books simultaneously. And then again, that mindset changed and I realized I could read a couple of books simultaneously and it works just perfectly fine. But to do so, I would encourage you to read books from different genres. Then let's say if you're reading two novels, the plots of the two novels don't get confused in your head. If you are fine not confusing them, then you can read that. But for me personally, I like to read books from different genres. Let's say I'm reading a novel and I'm reading a self-help book or something about finances or marketing or business, something related to my school. So I make sure that I read two books, one for pleasure and one for work. So currently, for example, the two books that I showed you in the beginning, one book is a Japanese art of making peace with money. It's called Happy Money. Um, I recently purchased this book and I just started reading it. I'll let you know if I liked it or not. So this is something I'm reading for my work and just like self-development. And then this is the second book that I'm reading. It's called Silk. It's an international bestseller. It's a novel. So I carry two with me. The reason I do that is because on the days when I feel like my mind is fresh and I'm ready to absorb new information, I'll read the self-help book. And on the days when I'm tired, then I'll use this book and I'll just read this a novel that's easy to read and easy to comprehend. For those of you that are still not convinced that it's possible to read two or even more books simultaneously, I want to make a point. For example, you're watching your favorite TV show and in the evening your friend suggests let's go to a movies and watch a movie together. If you watch that movie in that day when you were watching your TV show, you're definitely not going to confuse the TV show with the movie. They have different plots, they have different ideas. The same applies to books. Actually, having the two books together makes you want to read consistently. So say I am tired of reading something that is so dense or academic or for work related, then I can easily switch to something that's more entertaining and pleasurable to read. The point is that you make reading your habit and that's how you develop habit by doing it consistently. Tip number six is read the book actively. It's so important to read actively, just like it's so important to listen actively. By the way, I've made a video about how to listen actively or how to be a good listener. If you haven't checked out that video, make sure that you do. I'll also put a link down in the description box below. What I mean by active reading is make sure you have a pen, but if you don't feel comfortable highlighting with a pen, you can have a pencil in your hand and go and underline all the interesting ideas, quotes, concepts, maybe some facts, maybe statistics that you find interesting that speak to your mind and your heart. 
What I like to do is I underline those ideas and on the sidebar I actually write what I'm thinking about in relation to that concept or idea that I just read. And that helps you to visually remember the information better because A, you've highlighted it and you've stopped to reflect about that concept or idea. For those of you that don't like doing anything or writing anything on your book, you can use sticky notes, this little tiny sticky notes that you can stick along the ideas or the pages where you reflected upon and then make sure that you copy the information from there into a notebook so you can retain the information better. Also, it helps you, for example, when you need to look through the book and revise the information that was presented there, you can open your book and look into what are some things that you've highlighted or maybe put a sticky note on so therefore help you recall the information better. Tip number seven is write down all the takeaway points, lessons, concepts, ideas, anything that spoke to your heart and mind as I already mentioned into a notebook or perhaps type it in your notes. I actually got used to this habit. When I was in school, we were assigned summary books to read. So our teacher asked us to do a summary of those novels that we read. So when we came back to school in September, we were able to discuss those readings that we've done, remember the names of the, you know, the important figures in the books that were mentioned. So this actually got me into a habit of recapping all the books that I'm reading. I don't do it for the novels anymore for obvious reasons, I'm not in school anymore, but what I do is I take notes for any self-help or self-development books that I'm reading. So as I mentioned already in tip number six, once I've highlighted the important concepts, ideas and all of that, I take a time to actually sit down and type in all the interesting things that I uh, took away from the book. It could be some personal lessons or some things that I personally perceived uh, to be a message in the book. It might be not so obviously stated, but I thought these were the takeaway lessons. So I'll write them down. I'll also write down interesting quotes or maybe some facts or statistics. I sometimes even write out things that I don't agree with. So then if I need to make some arguments to counter argue something, I'll use these points from the book. I name the file of the of this document entitling you know the name of the book, the author, uh, sometimes even the time when I read it, and then I'll collect all these files into this folder called the books I read. And then when I need to recall information or when I need to write a speech and make points from certain you know topics, I can always go back to my notes and go through them and be able to recall information from all of them. Tip number eight and the final tip for today, a tip that actually I learned recently about and just blew my mind. I was like, why didn't I think of it ever before? A friend of mine, my roommate, my best friend from college, Delara, shout out to her. She told me recently that there is this reading tip that she discovered as well recently is when you are reading a hard copy book, you're listening to the audiobook simultaneously. When she told me about it, I was taken aback. I was like, wow, how do you even do that? Don't you get confused with your own voice in your head as well as the voice of the audiobook? And she was like, why would you? And she brought me a good example or a point that she argued. It's like watching a movie with subtitles. You're actually listening to the movie, but you're reading the subtitles below, therefore helping you to reinforce the message or understand what they're talking about even better. So the tip is, if you have a hard copy of the book, you can find an audio version online. And while reading the book to yourself, you can also listen to the audio book at the same time. It brings the two learning channels together and that works magic. So without losing any time, you're helping yourself to retain the information from what you are reading 200 times more. So instead of using 100, you're taking it to a 200. This is particularly useful for people that are reading for academic purposes. This will definitely help you to remember the information a lot faster and a lot better. To finalize this video, to answer a lot of the questions that you guys have been asking me, I love reading personally. I've always been into reading. I think this is a habit that has been, you know, uh, imprinted in me ever since I was little because our teachers assign us reading because I used to read with my mom. Uh, it's something that I grew up doing and I still love it. Of course, there are times when I cannot finish a single book in three months and there are times when I can finish three books in one week. And I'm never harsh on myself. I'm 
always patient with myself because when it comes to reading, I don't want to start hating the process. I want to always be in love with reading and I wanted to make a lifestyle habit for myself, but I also encourage you to make it a lifestyle habit for yourself. Thank you so much for watching this video until the very end. I hope that you find these tips useful and applicable in your daily lives. Please let me know in the comment section below what are some tips that you are using to make yourself fall in love with reading books or maybe what are some video suggestions that you have for me and I'll be more than happy to shoot new videos for you. I'll see you next time. Bye!